Hello fellow tryhards, it's Mad Buddha back again. This time we're going to be taking a deeper look at Black Arts Bay. Black Arts Bay is a rather large three lane map. It has six mercenary camps on it. Two bruiser camps that push down the top, one bruiser camp that pushes down bottom, two siege giant camps which push down bottom, and one boss camp which pushes down top. The map mechanic on this map is the cannon fire from Blackheart's ship, which you pay for with coins. Each mercenary camp around the map gives two coins, and there is an extra mercenary camp on Blackheart's bay, of which there are four that are called the balloon camps, easy to take camps that are there for the sole purpose of giving extra coins. The map mechanic on this map spawns chests at the top and bottom locations here and here that give 5 coins. The chests are completely random after the first spawn. Blackheart himself charges 10 coins for his first volley at a set of enemy structures and it costs 2 additional coins after every time you turn in, so 10, 12, 14, etc. Blackheart will always shoot at middle fort then top fort, then bottom fort, then middle keep, then top keep, then bottom keep, and then the core. Now that we know a little bit about the map layout, let's talk about some of the basic strategy for Blackheart's Bay. Blackheart's Bay is arguably the snowballiest map in the entire game. This is because of two reasons. Teams that have coins and are ahead never have to approach the turn-in until they are ahead a talent level, giving them an almost sure win in the upcoming team fight. As such, teams that are behind have to go into enemy territory and make consistently risky maneuvers to try and find picks that reward them with an abundance of coins. On top of this, Black Hearts Bay along with Sky Temple are two maps where the map mechanic itself directly damages enemy structures, meaning that you have to be extremely preemptive about stopping enemy teams, and this is something that most teams are not very good at, and is definitely not something that is easy to coordinate in solo queue. If you are ahead on Blackheart's Bay though, instead of having to make risky pick maneuvers, you simply have to play the map from the outside in. What do I mean by that? Well, if you get a mercenary camp, it's going to be pushing down top or bottom lane. And in both of these cases, one member of the enemy team is going to have to go and deal with the pressure that the mercenary camp creates lest they risk losing a significant amount of fortifications. As such, you can do two things. Guarantee that you are ahead of talent level and by creating pressure right before you go to turn in your coins, you can also almost guarantee that you will be 5 versus 4 with that talent advantage, making it nearly seamless that you will turn in your coins every time. So the trick on Blackheart's Bay is to always have someone who can gather coins consistently for your team and deal with camps on their own. Because characters who can deal with camps on their own will allow their teams to soak all the rest of the lane's experience and it allows you to only have one character with coins on them, making it safe for your team to turn in with only one person channeling during the team fight and also easy to create all of the pressure tactics that I just mentioned. As for standard laning, there are usually two forms in which you can approach Blackheart's Bay. A popular one right now is to have someone who can soak both of the top and middle lanes by themselves, for example Zool, which allows your team to send four people bottom and just hammer away on the bottom fort. This allows your team to get a quick boost in experience and eliminate a fort altogether giving your team significant map pressure. The other and more classic way to play the map is to send four people top and one person bottom, putting pressure on two lanes simultaneously in number. Regardless of which strategy you run, you're often going to have one person who's particularly good at camps drop out when camps start to spawn at two minutes to collect coins for your team. Remember that since Blackheart's Bay is extremely snowball-y, it's important that in your first major team fight that you try your absolute best to win it, and if it starts to look hairy, just get out. If you are in the lead, it's significantly easier to play Blackheart's Bay by just doing outside-in map pressure, 
and safer than it is to do risky pick strategies that you have to do when you're behind. That being said, let's talk about the terrain on Blackheart's Bay and the areas in which terrain changes how you have to fight. The most common places where you're going to get in teamfights on Blackheart's Bay are at the Blackheart's Turn-In himself and at Boss. The Blackheart's Turn-In is predominantly a large open space, however there are two vents that allow teams who have already gotten there to create strong defensive positions with great vision awareness by getting into the vents first. There's also this whole little network of barrels down here. These barrels are noob traps. Do not walk into the barrels under nearly any circumstance. There is no room to maneuver once you have entered into this area, which makes it extremely easy for tanks to quarter off and pincer a squishy character, and also nearly impossible to dodge any form of skill shot. You're going to want to maintain position up here in the nice open space where you have the ability to move and outplay your opponents with skill. When we go up to the boss, it's important to know it's very easy to use the boss as a means of baiting enemy teams in unexpected teamfights. The team goes up to boss and caps the watchtower here in the middle point. They can just wait in the bushes and for the unexpected enemy team that thinks they're doing boss to pass by and get a quick Chinese bush meta cheese. So when you're approaching boss, try and approach along the outside lanes that allow you to get there without passing immediately by the watchtower. This will allow you a larger net of safety with which to approach boss so that you can have a team fight on even footing. If you control the watchtower or you know the enemy team is on boss, then of course you don't have to worry about this, and boss itself functions as a throw pit. Because there are two choke points that you have to push through in order to assail the boss in the first place, the team that is already inside should have the vision advantage of the ascending team. Because they will have the vision advantage, you would expect that they are able to get into a position that is able to receive the attacking team with ease. However, because this boss pit is extremely shallow and the boss itself takes up so much space, this is rarely the case. The attacking team in this boss pit almost always has the advantage because they are pincering off the enemy team into a small corridor. Therefore, when you come to fight this boss, make sure that your tank leads and if you are the tank, that you are full of confidence when you face check these vents, as you should be able to get a few quick kills on the team that's currently trying to do boss. This is a great way for teams that are trying to make a comeback to find momentum, getting themselves back into the game, usually getting mini coins and the boss pressure off of the opposing team. This has been a deeper look at Blackheart's Bay. This video was brought to you by Nihilism Gaming. Check them out at nihilismgaming.com where they offer Heroes of the Storm coaching lessons.